Hello everyone, Marcelo is my name. I'm the niche fragrance collector. I love all things niche perfumery and I'm gonna talk about the citrus family. I'm a big fan of citrus fragrance, actually, <laughs> disclaimer, I'm a big fan of all the fragrances, but I thought I wanna start with citrus. I am a big fan of citrus perfumes. Now there is one misconception and that is that citrus is more of a summer style fragrance. Disagree completely here uh, in Australia, Southern Hemisphere, we're coming into winter. I have been wearing each one of these. They're a happy fragrance and I think that's the key of a beautiful citrus fra a perfume is that it, it's, an, it's happiness in a bottle. People complain that citrus fragrances tend to disappear quickly. It's true. Now I'm not a chemist. Um, I do understand that the citrus molecule is quite small and so as a result it does evaporate very quickly hence why we have a lot of sort of citrus notes at in um, in the top note of a fragrance whereas if you like citrus all the way through your fragrance or for that citrus to hang around then i'm going to put forward these particular fragrances here let me begin with in my opinion the og it was this fragrance here santa maria novella that actually converted me to all things niche perfumery. My wife and I, we were in Florence, we were doing a, a city walk tour and the tour guide said that the oldest perfume house was established in Florence. And I'm like, oldest perfume house? I mean, I love perfume. <laughs> Tell me more. Um, so I went to the actual uh, Oficina, I think it's called Oficina Oficial de, Med de Santa Maria Novela. Um, and they the place is just phenomenal. Now this one here is Santa Maria Novella Classica. To put into context what this fragrance is about, so Catarina de' Medici in 1533 spoke to the, the friar monks that were from Santa Maria Novella. She was being married off to, I think, a French king. And she said to them, can you create a fragrance that reminds me of Italy? So think of 4711, I guess is if you want to quickly go, what's this fragrance about? 4711, that very classic cologne style perfume. Now I'll go one further. So, so the, the person or the, uh, the gentleman who created the cologne, Eau de Cologne, uh, his name was, oh, I'm gonna put it right here, but Farina is his surname, Giovanni. Ah, Giovanni Maria Farina. So he, he actually created this Eau de Cologne in Cologne in Germany, but he was Italian. I mean, with a name like Giovanni Maria. Farin, I mean, but he was attributed to creating the cologne style fragrance. But in fact, if you really want to attribute where that citrus style of fragrance really was birthed, it was actually in Italy. Now it is an Eau de Cologne, so it's about, I think it's about 5% of, of actual oils that are in here. But I find that even as an Eau de Cologne, this lasts on me really, really well. This is a classic fragrance. If I'm if I'm sweating, if it's a warm day, this is the fragrance that absolutely is just, it's stunning, it's stunning. Now, if I were to categorize this, for me, it starts very citrusy, and it's a blend of lemon, oranges, that sort of very happy citrus fragrance. It goes into flowers, and finally, for me, it goes into a musky sort of plate. I looked at official notes, I can't see that musk is actually in the fragrance. Maybe it's me, maybe it's my, <laughs> musky elements coming through. Have you noticed there's not a lot left? I actually reverence this bottle. I did buy it in the official store, so I think that was has been there for about four, five hundred years or something like that. I know I can buy this online, blah -de blah but this is my bottle that I bought in Florence. Um, anyway, so uh, Santa Maria Novella, beautiful. Uh, they've got an awesome collection, beautiful house, amazing history, gorgeous history. Um, and the fragrance. This is, for me, when I wear this, this is Italy. The next one that I'd love to propose, this one gets a, not a bad rap. So in that 1861 lineup, Naxos gets all the love. Everyone's like, oh, Naxos, my goodness. My goodness. And yeah, and rightly so. I mean, it's a, it's a gorgeous fragrance. If you want a citrus fragrance that will last on you, then I would recommend to you Renaissance as, as a classic one. Now, the only, and this is where it, people sort of, uh, I guess there's a sticking point. It does start off very, very lemony. And I'm gonna say it has to. If you want that, because again, these are a citrus lineup, if you want that citrus to stay throughout the fragrance and not become something else, then it's gotta, it, it's gotta come out of the gate, you know, pretty um, hard and fast, basically. So it has, for me, this is a, a lemon explosion, but it follows by this beautiful greenness to it, so like a herbal green. 
And finally, there's a woods. Now, the woods are very soft. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it's like, a, it's like a cedar wood. There's a subtlety to it. There are some floral components to this fragrance. So this is my go-to. If I'm feeling nervous, if I'm feeling... So if I'm going into a meeting and I really want to have like an edge, I don't want to command the room. I don't want it to be too intense. But I just want that inner confidence for me. Renaissance is the one that I'm always wearing. And the reason for that, if I start to sweat, the fragrance then pops on me. It really begins to bloom and blossom. Uh, and it just reassures me. And you know, again, citrus fragrance is a classic to put you in the right mindset, makes you feel like, well, for me, Renaissance makes me feel, I got this. I've got this, I'm, I'm in control, I, I, I know what I'm doing. Have a look at the video that I created on this. I'm proposing that the reason why Zerjov called this Renaissance is purely for the fact that the Italians really are the forerunners when it comes to creating beautiful citrus fragrances. So this is a tribute to that. And as I mentioned here, you know, 1533, when the friars from Santa Maria Novella created this for Caterina Medici. All right, so if you want something robust, green, fresh, um, vibrant, uh, then Renaissance is the, the fragrance for you. It has great longevity, will last really well on me. This one here, so Gritti Fragrances is the, um, the house. Their fragrance collection is pretty spectacular. They have a really good library of perfumes. And Neroli Extreme, this is a beautiful, almost velvety citrus. It has this wonderful ambery vanilla dry down to it. So it starts off classic citrus. It has a beautiful uh, bouquet of, of, um, of oranges and lemons, uh, very subtle. So whereas the Renaissance starts off very strong out of the gate, very lemon, you know, real, real big lemon pop. This one here has a nice subtlety too. I'm gonna to go one further. So my wife is a huge fan of this particular fragrance. Every time I spray this, no matter where I am in the house, she instantly picks up on this particular fragrance. This is an evening fragrance. This is a wonderful going out fragrance. It's a much more subtle, sublime citrus fragrance. So the history on the Gritti family is, so Luca Gritti is the owner of the business. His ancestors are connected to the Doge. So um, he's great, great, great grandfather, I'm guessing, um, back in 15 something. He was actually the Doge of, of Venice. So um, yeah, anyway, cool story. I, I like the thought, uh, I'd love, I, I'd love to actually go to Luca Gritti's uh, Venetian Palazzo one day and um, interview him. That would be cool. Luca, if you're watching my friend, I would love to be there and um, we can talk about your fragrances in person, in Venice, forget about it. So we're moving across, brand is called Fueguya. They're Argentinian. Now, it's an Argentinian brand, how cool is that? I'm Argentinian, did you know that? I drink mate, did you know that? Julian Badel is the uh, perfumer and the owner of the brand. Now the guy's an artist, he's a naturalist, he, he loves to delve on things of art and everything else. I'm gonna spend time on this particular house, all right? There's, they've got, there's something really unique about these guys, actually just one really quick point. They only create 400 of a particular fragrance. So once they create the scent, they only create 400 units. And when it's gone, it's gone. I mean, I'll show you the packaging later on, it's, it's pretty full on, this, this particular house. Now, Humboldt, if you like citrus that is now, we're moving more into uh, very distinct, quite robust. Uh, definitely, if you want something that, that will last all day long, this fragrance here is, is pretty powerful. And in that sense, it has a great, wonderful staying power. Now it starts off, and, it, and it's interesting because it does start off quite sharp. So it has a sharp, Citrus no. Now I know that listed on the official note is it's a bergamot, but to my nose, it's almost like a pomelo. So it's like a, a grapefruit. There is a sharpness, a tartness to it. It then moves on to this, um, this tart, acidic kind of uh, vibe. And, and I, it, it wasn't until I finally saw that there was passion fruit in the heart notes that I'm like, yeah. It, it actually, because the, the, it's interesting that the opening and the heart, they almost blend together and it's not until you go, it has passion fruit in the, in the middle of it, you're like, there it is, there's that tartness that, that's coming through. Finally in the base, it then settles into this wonderful, sweet, um, Moorish, Mandarin kind of citrus. As a day fragrance, awesome. As an evening, actually I've been wearing it as an evening fragrance, um, but there's no, it's a, it's a, it, it does, when it does dry down, it does go into a nice sort of um, citrus um, sweet place, but there's no warmth to it. So to go out evening, 
this one here, Neroli Extreme, gorgeous as an evening fragrance. That was ambery notes, really sit beautifully. And um, it, 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 as I mentioned earlier, it does retain those citrus components to it, but it does go to a warmer place. Whereas this one here, it retains this sharpness to it. It re does retain sort of a vibrance in the actual fragrance. This one's a winner. This one is, there's 400 bottles. So if you haven't had a chance to go hunt this baby down, um, I would recommend it to you. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a really gorgeous fragrance. This is Wulong Cha by Nishane. Now Nishane, gorgeous perfumers. I mean, all gorgeous range of fragrances that they have. I fell in love with this one instantly. When I, when I first experienced this, I'm like, my goodness gracious, where have you been all my life? In my opinion, there's nothing about this fragrance that makes you go, oh, I don't know if this is really for me. Everything about it is super inviting. It starts off with this beautiful fruity citrus sort of opening to it. It then migrates to a, a wonderful black tea. So I'd actually use it, they use oolong tea. And then finally in the base, it does retain a fruitiness to it. Now, some people would argue that this is not a classic citrus fragrance. I'm going to refute that argument, your honor. Um, I, for me, this is citrus. I mean, I was, well, when I say some people, my wife, because when I was sharing it, the lineup, she's like, oh, well, on chai, it's more of a black tea fragrance. I'm like, for me, that, that, that citrus in the opening, so it's orange, mandarin, and lemons, that, for me, that plays throughout the whole fragrance. Yes, it does go to a black tea, and that black tea uh, is, is fragrant, so that maybe that black tea is lending to those uh, early citrus notes that are in there. But if you want a fragrance that projects, I mean, if you want something that just commands a room, believe it or not, a citrus, I mean, go figure, a citrus that commands a room, Wulong Cha is your friend. Uh, I have been walking out, you know, just going for a walk in the neighborhood, and people have come up to me and they're like, I can smell your fragrance as I'm walking up to you. So uh, it's, this has enormous projection. The only downside to this fragrance is that my wife has claimed it as her own. So I bought this for myself. But every time I smell this, I'm now smelling Sandra, which is not a bad thing. So if you want something that is masculine or feminine, you know, junior neutral, uh, Wulong Cha plays wonderfully on a man, gorgeous on a woman. Actually on that, let me just sort of reel backwards. So for me, I find that Renaissance is a little bit more masculine -ing. I find that the greenness and the woods in it d d does give it a masculine sort of edge. It has a bit more of a sharpness. Uh, Neroli Extreme, man or woman, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. It's just an awesome fragrance for, for either party. Um, Humboldt, I think Humboldt, there is a, I think it's that sharpness. I mean, um, you know, the other thing too is that the boys in my family all wear Humboldt. And so we, we all enjoy wearing this. I haven't seen any of the girls reach for this. All right, so I think that there is a, I think that sharpness, that tartness that's in the fragrance, um, maybe is a little bit more masculine leaning, but I don't see why a woman couldn't wear that there is a sharpness there. So heads up on that. Um, whereas Wool and Char, oh, gorgeous, just gorgeous fragrance. All right, last one. Anyone who complains, citrus fragrance do not last. Let me introduce you to my good friend, Alessandro Gautieri, and I'm going to do a full review on Bergamasque. This is like an explosion has gone off. So if I categorize this fragrance, it's a bergamot opening. It does go to like a slightly uh, citrus floral place, but I got to breathe in deep for that. Just to get, there's another element in there and then it goes, it does go into a musky place. So it does have a very animalic, very heavy, dry. I mean, I almost feel like it's, it's arid. You know, I feel like I'm in the desert smelling this fragrance. I enjoy wearing this as my winter fragrance. So when a cold, cold day, it just radiates this warmth. This fragrance will last forever. My son also owns Bergamusk. We were at the beach at, at the start of the year. He had gone, so I, when we met at the beach, I'm like, hey, Mr. Bergamusk, I could smell the perfume on him. Anyway, we, he went into the water, da -da -da -da, splashing around, playing around, and I came out. I'm still smelling bergamusk on him. So this thing does not wash off, all right? So just give you a heads up, like all the Alessandro Galtieri fragrances, and in particular, the, the Orto Parisi, two to three sprays is the maximum that you would spray on this. Anything more, you will, this will be your fragrance for life. 
bada bing there it is so if you want some beautiful gorgeous citrus fragrances as i mentioned either summer or winter strongly recommend this particular lineup each one of these are long lasting they sit fantastic on the skin i'm gonna do another one or another fragrance family what would you like me to do next florals woods where should i go next gourmands perhaps um i'd, I'd love to know thanks everyone we'll see you on the next episode